Starship had a strong liftoff and impressive operations in space. But what goes up must come down, and that means that it needs a safe landing method. Indeed, that's what SpaceX has always been aiming for, especially after Flight 3. The question is, when will they achieve this? Recently, SpaceX leaders, including Gwyn Shotwell and Elon Musk, have continuously made different revelations related to this problem. Everything seems to indicate we could soon witness great landings with Starship stages. But what exactly did they reveal, and how is SpaceX preparing for that goal? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. After any flight, everyone often wonders what the organization will do next. That is no exception with Starship's Flight 3. And without making everyone wait too long, Less than a week after the flight, SpaceX President Gwyn Shotwell had many revelations about Flight 4, as well as further plans this year at the Satellite 2024 conference. Firstly, she revealed Flight 4's schedule, with an estimate of about six weeks from the conference time, meaning the flight could take place in early May. The SpaceX team is currently still reviewing Flight 3 data, and this is really important for SpaceX to complete in order for that mishap investigation required by the FAA to proceed. Additionally, they are also working on repairs with the launch pad and testing hardware for Flight 4, notably the recent static fire tests with the S-29. As for the process of Flight 4, Shotwell said a few specific goals. And uh, I don't think we're going to deploy satellites on the next flight. Things are still in trade, but I think we're really going to focus on getting re-entry right um, and, and making sure we can land these things where we want to land them successfully. Thus, Flight 4 will still be the same as the previous flight with no payload in the payload compartment. As Shotwell pointed out, this decision allows them to focus on successfully landing stages. This is understandable because in Flight 3, SpaceX wasn't able to complete the goal yet. Reentry and landing is an important step for SpaceX to achieve the goal of fully reusing Starship that they set when designing the vehicle. This not only helps them in costs savings, but also helps them quickly and continuously refly in the future. Shywell then added about further plans for Starship this year. Um, I'd love to get Starship uh, into orbit, deploying satellites and recovered, both stages fully recovered. Um, with a rapid turnaround on those stages as well. In addition to reaching orbit to continue increasing reliability, SpaceX will also launch payload this year. Hopefully that will happen soon, as then we can see the payload door system in official operation after the first test on Flight 3. However, the focus will still be on the landing. As Shopwell said, they will continuously make attempts to recover both stages. It'll all apply to flights happening this year and not just for Flight 4. Or perhaps the difference between flights will be how they land the ship and the booster. Let's go ahead and go over this in greater detail. Besides Shotwell, Elon Musk also recently made an interesting revelation about Starship via video. He determined that they would launch Starship to the moon within the next three years and was confident that the progress of Starship was very rapid. This may include Starship launch and testing progress as well as works on the Starship HLS. He also set a specific goal for this year with about five to six flights. But he finally mentioned that the Starship landing and reuse has its own plans. So I think we got a, a decent shot of achieving um, full reusability of both stages, uh, the booster and the ship, uh, this year. This further confirms Shotwell's revelations a few days earlier. It also emphasizes SpaceX's determination to land Starship with the Mechazilla arm this year instead of landing booster in the Gulf of Mexico or the ship in the Pacific Ocean or the Indian Ocean. When mentioned by both top leaders, it seems that the goal of landing Starship is very important for SpaceX this year. They will need to complete and master this task soon to focus on other tasks for the next year, like building a ship-to-ship -ship refueling system, or more notably, the Starship HLS uncrewed flight demo. This leads to another interesting question. What specific times will they land Starship by Mechazilla arm? In my opinion, this can happen this year, but not in upcoming flights like Flight 4 or Flight 5. First SpaceX has not yet completely mastered the landing process when both stages encountered problems and exploded. 
mid-flight. SpaceX still needs more tests to make sure they can control everything before thinking about catching with the Mechazilla arm. At present, the method of landing in the ocean is clearly the safest option. Secondly, the current launch tower will have a very difficult time handling both launch and landing in such a short turnaround time, which should be approximately an hour. It's believed that if SpaceX wants to use this method, they need another launch tower to be responsible for the catching mission. In the best case scenario, it'll be the second launch tower that SpaceX is planning to build at Starbase. But SpaceX has not yet started this work even when almost all segments have arrived. This is probably related to the Starbase expansion procedure that SpaceX is requesting. Based on the previous launch tower construction progress, SpaceX still might need several months, if not half a year, for this work. That's why the Mechazilla arm landing probably won't happen for about one or two flights. Instead, we might have to wait until at least Flight 6. It's also believed that Flight 4 and Flight 5 will give SpaceX the mastery in the landing portion of the mission, all while the new launch tower may be completed around the same time. In any case, Flight 3 was a huge stride compared to the previous two flights. Thanks to the great upgrades, it flew longer and reached significantly higher altitudes. In particular, both stages have entered the landing process. Although there were still problems, the booster was less than 500 meters from the ocean's surface. And the ship also had an impressive few minutes of re-entry with the surrounding plasma effect. In order to accomplish these goals, SpaceX still needs to perform many upgrades. Whether they land with a Mechazilla arm or land in the ocean, landing support parts like engines or grid fins must work properly and optimally. The booster engine on the last flight worked better than on previous flights, but still had problems when activating for landing. This caused the booster to fall at a breakneck speed of up to 1,112 kilometers per hour at the time of the explosion. Therefore, SpaceX will still need to test an upgrade to improve engine reliability for the entire flight, which is beneficial to both the booster and ship in order to complete the remaining missions. With progress through each flight, it's believed that it will be soon completed. Next, the grid fin also needs an adjustment. Although less mentioned than the engine, the grid fin is also considered the cause of the difficult landing, showing the strong vibrations in the final period of the flight. The grid fin on the booster and and the flap on the ship will need to be upgraded in order to ensure the ability to navigate and change the posture of the prototype, making the landing process a little bit smoother. With the ship, SpaceX also needs to upgrade the heat shield system. This system also performed quite well in the recent flight. The biggest upgrade that needs to be done will be the installation stage. SpaceX will need to ensure that the heat shield will be firmly attached to the prototype, avoiding falling off like in previous flights. And of course, SpaceX needs to start building a new launch tower right now. Although they will not use the Mechazilla arm catching system on the next flight, they still need to do it as soon as possible, by the end of this year at the latest. Even though SpaceX has experience with this work with the current tower at the launch site in the tower in Florida and the tower in Florida, they may still need several months, as mentioned before, to complete all systems, including the tower, Mechazilla arm, OLM, water deluge system, and more. Once built, they will also need to test a lot before putting it into operation. More than ever, this is the time for them to ramp up that work. But it can be said that the moment that we witness Starship landing is fast approaching. Landing and reuse. Both are difficult, nigh impossible for many organizations. But with SpaceX, everything is gradually becoming a normal task. They surprised the world after doing this with the Falcon 9. So what's to say that they won't be able to do so with the Starship next? And besides, once successful, the landing and reuse of the world's largest rocket will become a new symbol of the aerospace industry standard. So let's get ready to welcome our protagonist, the Starship, especially after bleh, especially after it returns from its magical journey from the skies. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX. And until next time, keep looking up.